Geothermal unit is not working and there's a high pressure issue. What causes a high pressure issue in a geothermal unit? Today I'm going to show you the geothermal units that I'm working on. I've got two units. One of the geo units has a high pressure fault and we're going to find out what the reason was. And the other geo unit has no pressure. So there was no faults present on the front panel of that geo unit and I asked the customer do you remember there being any LED lights flashing and the customer didn't remember so that's okay I hope you're ready to learn about geothermal units if you are definitely before we start hit that like button subscribe hit the bell ding so you know what I'm doing if you would like a guide that I can send you to learn more about geothermal units click the join button if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much. If you want the guide, become a member. Click the join button, become a member. Go down in the comments, say, I joined. I'll give you my email. That'll lead to contact with me. And then I will email you that guide so you can learn more about geothermal units, like what tool I use to fill the loops or check the pressure, like what type of loop variations, configurations are there, how many feet per loop, uh, depending on what type of loop and depending on what ton, you need a certain amount of loop. So it may be a slinky, horizontal, vertical. You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad. Let's go. Well, we know what's wrong with the first geo. We've got no pressure in our loop, so there's not enough water. We're going to fill it up with water and see what happens. That coaxial becomes the condenser. So if you don't have water going through the coaxial, then you'll have high pressure. So let's fill it up and let's see what happens. Look at that. All right, we'll fill it up for a little bit and then see what it levels out at. System is full of water now, 45, 46 right there on the water inlet. And then we have got 43 on the water outlet, so three PSI for a pressure drop that is more than acceptable very good and right here is where you have the high pressure issue see that red light blinking so this is a water furnace we got two coils we've got this air side heat exchanger coil right here and this right here becomes cold because this is the evaporator uh, during the cooling operation and then that water uh, to refrigerant coaxial down there is the condenser so it becomes hot so it needs that water and now we're full of water so we got the first geo unit fixed awesome all right geo unit number two we have no refrigerant we have zero refrigerant this is 410a there's oil in the bottom here for this air side heat exchanger coil and this is the problem. This coil needs to be replaced and I'm gonna to have to get pricing and availability, find out when I can get this coil and we're gonna replace it. So we got a bunch of oil in the bottom here though. And you can see the oil. See that oil? Ooey. All right, good deal. There's the flow center, telezone. This is for the zone dampers. Good deal. This right here is for the D superheater loop. And it's closed off, so they're not using it. All right. Let me show you where I hooked my gauges up. There's a high pressure gauge, low pressure gauge. Glad we were able to find the problems today with the geo units. Unfortunately, I was only able to fix one of the problems. The other problem is going to require a part to be ordered. No problem. I'll probably just order the part for the customer because that's what I would definitely choose for an option between a unit and a coil because that coil is going to be significantly cheaper. And I've replaced these coils in the past. It's not that hard, although the coils are quite heavy, but that's okay. So we had no water in one of the geos and hopefully that loop is not damaged. We will find that out later on and we may have to dig up and repair a loop, but hopefully not. And in the meantime, what I've done for customers is where the flow center is, you've got a 3 8 drive for a socket that you have to use to operate that three-way valve and access it. 
usually I'll take and add a regulator and then I'll tie it into the home's water supply and that will add water as needed so that they can get by for now if that loop is damaged. So we're able to add water. One had no water, the other one had no refrigerant. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. You know that I love questions. I answer all the questions because questions can become content. So definitely, if you have a question, put it down there. If you don't, let me know who you are. Let me know where you're from. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.